What's up guys, it is Ben H here with another video, and in today's video we are going to be doing another tech tutorial. Now this tech tutorial is going to be all about Quill, or more as a Quill Complete Beginner's Guide. With that being said, let's get started. Alrighty, so Quill is a website where you can have like interactive writing and grammar. So it's a website that helps you on inter interactive writing and grammar. I can't speak, I guess, today, so I apologize on that. Interactive grammar and interactive grammar. Interactive writing and grammar. There we go. Oh my gosh. All right, but before we start this video and we start this complete beginner's guide, I want you guys to make sure you do the following three things. First thing is subscribe, like, and turn on post notifications where you get notified when I upload a new video. Simple, right? I mean, I would hope it's simple. All right, just smash that subscribe button, turn on that little like button, and... Turn on notifications, because if you do turn on notifications, then whenever I, like, post a short, post a video, you'll get notified. And it's pretty cool. So, turn them on, and then you'll get notified. All right, now with Quill, let's start it. So, first thing that you're going to want to do is, you can see, if you hover over these tabs, there are, like, these little pop-ups that come up here, like, school districts, learning tools, explore curriculum. Teacher Center, About Us, and log in and sign up. If you guys already do have an account to Quill, that is great. That is awesome. Click on the Log In button, and you can log in with your Google account, your Clever account, if you have a Clever account, as well as logging in with email or username and password if you want to log in straight from the website. But I'm going to go back to the website because... I have used this in the past on my school account, but I'm going to actually use this on my personal account, which I do not have yet. So let's click on the sign up button. Now it says sign up. Now before you can log in or sign up with Google or sign up with Clever, stuff like that, you have to choose one of these four things. First one is student. Student is where you're going to select this option to join your teacher's class and complete assigned activities. The next one is K-12 teacher, which is what we're going to talk about today, okay, because I'm going to do the teacher version for you guys today. So you'll select this if you're using this to create classes, sign activities, and view reports. K-12 administrator, this is where you can select this option to manage teacher accounts, access teacher reports, and view school-wide student data. As an admin, you can still create classes and assignments. So a lot of this is going to be similar, but for today's video... I'm going to focus on the K-12 teacher. And then the last one you have is parent, tutor, or caregiver. So you can select this option to assign activities and view reports from your individual students. All right, but we are going to select K-12 teacher. So click on that. Now here is where it's tell asking you to create an account. So you can sign up with Google, sign up with Clever, or enter your first, last e e first and last name as well as your email and password, and sign up. But I'm going to sign up sign up with Google because it's, it's just way easier. So if you have a Google account or you have a Clever account, it makes things way easier. So I'll be back to you guys once I have signed in. Alrighty, so we are now in Quill. Now, one thing I want to say is when you do sign up with Google, I don't know if this is what it is for Clever, probably not, but you have to give permissions for Quill to access Google Classroom and their other Google Workspace application. So just want to keep you guys that in mind. You will have to agree on some stuff as well before you guys can get into this page. But once you sign up, you should see something that looks similar. It will say, welcome, then your name. Follow these steps to get the ball rolling. So it, it tells you exactly what you want to do, and we're going to follow these steps before I can show you guys how you're going to do this. If you want to follow along while I'm doing this, feel free to do that. Awesome. All right, but you can see once you complete a task on this list, it will be crossed off. 
Now the next part that you guys are going to be doing is creating a class. Now with creating a class, it's very simple. Click on the create a class button. Now it says create a class, class name. This is where you're going to create your class name. So here is an example. Let's just do Ben H YouTube example class. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just do that. Now it says grade. This will not limit the activities you can access. So click grade. Click grade. Jeez, I can't speak today. And you can choose. Let me move remove this. You can choose, but you can choose between first through other. So if you want to first through twelve university or other. Let's just select other. And now you can see your class code. Class code. This one for some weird reason is blanket merch. I guess maybe if you click reset. Okay, that was interesting. Click if that happens, click create a class. Enter your class name uh Ben H example class. Let's just do that. Select a grade, let's just select other, and you can see the class code's different, and then you can click on create class. Now, after you have to chosen your name, your grade, it's going to ask you to add students. How would you like to add your students? There's two ways at the moment. Students create their own accounts, so get a unique link that students can use to create their accounts, create accounts and join your class. But the second one you can do as well, create accounts for your students. So for students, create accounts by inputting each student name. You'll get down, downloadable login information to share with your students. I suggest, sorry, my battery thing is running low. I got to plug that in. But anyways, I am going to click students create your own accounts for this video, but you can choose the other option as well if you would like. But well, let's click on students create their own accounts. Now, once you click on that, you will see this is the link that you will share with your students. But if you did do the create accounts for students, this is where you would enter in their first, last name and stuff. So let's do this one just for you can see like students that are in your class and stuff. So let's just say for an example, let's see here, Brian Brain. That says Brain, not Brian. <laughs> B R I A N. There we go. Brian, and then let's say um, Brian. Can't think of a last name. If you guys have a last name, I should use comment below. Brian. Um, Morse. Let's just do Morse. Brian Morse. If that's if you guys are watching, this is your name. Sorry for using your name, but I just need to have some random name. All right, let's click add. And now you can see it says name is Brian Morris, your, their username. So it's their first, first name, dot their last name, at your class code, I guess. And then their password, and that, that is it. Do not try logging into this because this will be deleted. So these people will be deleted. So you will not be able to access. So don't try logging in. Next, click on Next, and now it says Set Up Instructions. So download student logins and set up instructions. This PDF includes usernames and passwords for each student and instructions for accessing their cool accounts. So you can choose to download that PDF right here, but if you do not want to, just click on Done. Now you can see your active classes. My eyes are bugging me. Active classes. So you can see you have one active class because we've created one active class. Ben H. Example class. All right, now if you go back to the home page, you will see that list. Oh, I'm tired. This time change thing is really messing with me today. All right, so you can see the create a class and add students thing is crossed off because we, we just did that. The next part is exploring our library. So if you click on that, you are going to see how you're going to assign activities. It says find the perfect writing activities for your students. You have zero activities assigned. So if you could view assigned activities, this is gonna this is where you can manage your activities. So if you had any activities that you have signed assigned, those will appear here. But let's click on the assign activities button. If you scroll down, there are a couple options. The first one is assess students writing with a diagnostic. 
The next one we have is explore all activities in our activity library, browse featured activity packs, view springboard pre-AP and AP activities, view world history activities, view world AI knowledge activities, and then you can also browse the newest reading for evidence activities here as well. As you can see, there is 60 at the moment, if you showed all of them. If you scroll way more down, down more, you can see helpful articles, and then learn more about Quill cool Premium. So there is a premium, but we will talk about that at the end of the video. But let's start, let's go into explore all activities in our activity library. Or actually, let's start with the assess. We'll go through all of these. Assess student writing with a diagnostic. So let's click on that. It says, which diagnostic covers the skills you want to assess? So here is all of them. First one is starter diagnostic baseline pre. This is where it has plural nouns, possessive nouns, capitalization, subject verb agreement, pronouns, and a commonly confused words. When your students are working on basic grammar concepts. So you can see there's this one, start, starter diagnostic growth post. So these two are here. This one's locked. If it's locked, that is because you haven't assigned the starter baseline diagnostic yet. You would have to assign that to unlock this one. But if you are a co-teacher, you do need to ask the classroom owner to assign this diagnostic or these diagnostics. The next one we have is an immediate diagnostic, so this is baseline pre again, and then we also have the same thing but for the post, advanced diagnostic, and then the same thing for the other one that's a growth post, this one's a baseline pre. We have ELL starter diagnostic, which is a baseline pre, as well as an ELL starter diagnostic that is a growth post. So one's at like the beginning of it and one's at the end of it if that makes sense. And then there is a lot of them. Now, there is also this preview button. So if you click preview on this, this is going to preview the lesson or the assignment, as you can see right here. So if you click on begin, you can see right here. So it says like, the athlete, the athlete goal is to win medal at all of her competition this, this season. Now it tells you what you're supposed to do. Rewrite the sentence, correct each bold world, world, each, sorry, you're seeing a lot of bloopers in this video. Rewrite the sentence, correct each bold word, do not add any new words. All right, so you would rewrite this whole sentence and do that, and then you would submit it. As well as save and exit if you want to come back to it. Well, let's go out of that and go back into here. If you click on select on any of these, this is where you can review and assign it. So first, you can choose to name the assignment. It already named it, but you can change it based on what you want. Review activities and pick due date. So you can choose a published date. So it's defaulted to right away, but you can also change it to any day and a specific time as well. As well as a due date. The due date is optional, but the published date is required. You can see when it's previously assigned, and you remove activities with this X. Now it says choose classes or, or students. So you can see this is the class I created, so you'll check that box, and you can also choose which students you want to. As you can see, the Brian Moores, that's the student that we created. As you can see, that's in there. But if I wanted to assign it except to that student, I would just unselect that student, which is because this is the only student that I have in this class. It unselects everyone. But you can also import classes from Google Classroom. I have created like five different Google Classroom videos. So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. There's like there's like a whole playlist by, based on it. And I will link it on the video at the end. So as my outro, it will be on there. So feel free to check out those videos after this one. As well as create a class on Quill. But I am not going to create it, so I am going to go back. Let's see here, maybe maybe this one. There we go. All right, let's go back. Looks like I, we have already completed the list, but that is how you would manage that. That's how you manage the first activity. 
The next part that we can access is Explore All Activities in our Activity Library. That's the next one. So if you click on that, you can see this is the Activity Library. So you can see like all of these different activities, and you can see there's 1,055 activities at the moment. There might be more, there might be less when you're watching this video, but that's how many there are when I'm creating this video. You can also choose to filter results. So like choose activities, so like independent reading texts, independent language skills, independent proofreading, whole classes instruction, and diagnostics. Those are the activity filters that you can do at the moment. You can do a grade level range, readability level, CCSS, grade level, ELL activities, concepts, so like adjectives, adverbs. This is mostly for like grammar and interactive stuff or like English language arts, ELA stuff. Um, you can also choose different topics. So science, social studies, and society and the arts are those three topics that there are, as well as content partners. So we have a AI, EDU, College Board, Core, Knowledge, and Word Generation. So you can filter those results by these specific things. So that is the activity library. Now if I click on it, it's going to open up a new tab. It's going to load the lesson. And now I'm back in my preview mode. <laughs> So you can preview it by just clicking on it, as well as clicking the preview button. You can save it. So if you save it, it will save in a spot. So if you go back into Quill, you can see leave without assigning. So if you if you do try to go somewhere else, it will ask it will give you this prompt leave without assigning. If you exit this the assigning process now, you will not be able to resume your current progress. However, you can assign new content at any time. Let's just click go to the dashboard. Now you can see if I go into manage activities. I don't really know where this part is, but hopefully I can find it because I did try saving it. Maybe it would be under. If you guys know, leave a comment below. But like I saved it, so I don't know if it would be under. Maybe it's in like a saved area, maybe. Um, let's see here. Maybe I put it, let's see, if we go back to our library. Maybe, let's see if I can maybe, maybe there's like a spot, maybe where I can like, because like I saved it, I don't know where it would, maybe if you save it, it goes to like the top, maybe, or maybe like if I do writing skills, maybe if I reload it, maybe it saves it to like the front, maybe. No, okay, I don't really know where the save part does. If you do know, and you want to tell me, go ahead, leave a comment below. I don't really know that part. I apologize. But if you do and you want to let me know, just let me know in the comments below. You can also see the grade. So you can see what this assignment or this assignment, this assignment or this assignment, that didn't make sense, this assignment or this task, you can see the grades that it recommends this for. So like this one's 4 to 5. This one is 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. 8, 9, and 10 to 12. So you can see, my correction, if it's grayed out, that means that it is not, they recommend not using this for that specific part. But if it's green, like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10 through 12, that means that they would recommend using it for these grades, but not 4 and 5. So the grayed out ones are what the grades you should not use for this assignment or this task. But the ones that are green are like the things that you are are recommended for you to use in your class for those grades, if that made any sense. So let's go back, go to dashboard. The next part I want to show you guys is back on the assigned activities, but that next part. So we talked about these two. Let's talk about this one. It says browse featured activity packs. So this is where you can choose to assign only independent practice or lead whole class lessons. So this is up to you. There's two choices here. We have browse independent practice activity packs and browse whole class lesson activity packs. So let's select, let's do both of these. So let's click the first one first, browse independent practice activity packs. Now this is going to have you select an activity pack for your students. So you can see here is all packs that you can choose from. We, but there's also, you can filter it for, for reading text, diagnostic, language skills, 
proofreading in whole class lessons. So you can pre preview it. You can filter it that way as well. But let's say I want this one. If you click on it, here is the activity pack. So you can see this is where it's going to have all the activities for like the assignments and stuff in here that you can assign based on that. So it's kind of like, think of it kind of like a folder for the activity library. It's just in kind of like a different spot. So like it will say like what are your students, what will students be doing? how difficult the activity is and what who what it's designed for. You can see it's designed for 8th through 12th grade. You can see the estimated time, which this one is 80 minutes. The standards, the concepts, the grade level range, and the readability. The word generation, or what are the alignment opportunities for this pack? Word generation, English language arts, common core standards. What will the students be reading? How long will the students need to complete this pack? So, like, there's, like, FAQ, like, frequently asked questions type thing as well. So, just keep that in mind. And then you can choose to select the pack right here. And then this is where you can name it, review the activities and the due dates. You can also copy a published date to all of them and copy all the due dates to all of them, too. So, like, you can bulk it. As well as choose the classes here as well as import from Google Classroom and create a class like we talked about. So that is how you would select that. Now let's go back to dashboard without assigning it. We'll go back to activities. Not activities. We'll go back to assign activities, and we will go back down to activity packs. And we did browse independent, but next next one we should do is browse whole class lesson activity pack. So click on that. Now it says select an activity pack for your students. You can filter it again by all packs, reading text, diagnostic, language skills, proofreading, and whole class discussions. Let's select the one here. You can see it has all the same things again. But this is where you can, it's literally almost the same thing, but the one is independent and one is for the whole class. Select back, and then you can review and sign again like that. Review and assign again like that. So pretty simple once you get the hang of it. The next one that we have here uh, after this one, we have View Springboard Pre-AP and AP Activities. So this is where you can view AP Activities, view Pre-AP Activities, and view Springboard Activities. So AP Activities, so this is going to show, so Quill does integrate with College Board, so you can look at that stuff here. I'm not going to dive too much into this, but this is where you can look at College Board things because Quill does integrate with that. You can view pre-AP as well here, as well as view Springboard activities. But all of this is run through College Board for those three. The next part that we have <laughs> is view World History activities. Also, something I did not mention is that if you see it says new on here, that means that these are new ones. So you might see this on like in the activity library when you're assigning an assignment, all that stuff. So if something is new, you will see the new option up here. But let's click on view world history activities. That's the next one. And this is going to bring up social studies. So you can look at world history stuff from 1200, 1200 CE present and 1750 CE present. So you can choose that. You can see this one, you can view activities, but this one you can see you can't because it says coming soon. So just keep that in mind. You can see build content knowledge and writing skills with reading for evidence. Close reading, constructing evidence-based claims, sentence fundamentals, what are social studies, teachers saying, stuff like that. Quill also integrates with OER project as well. And then questions and answers. And the last and final thing on this part, it says view building AI knowledge activities. Now, this is where it is interdisciplinary science. I hope I said that right. Interdisciplinary science or something like that is where you can build AI knowledge and you can view those activities there. And then you can build knowledge, build content knowledge and writing skills with reading for evidence. 
close reading, constructing evidence-based claims, and sentence fundamentals. And then Quill is also integrated with AIEDU, which, it, which stands for the AI Education Project. And then the question and, questions and answers are on this page as well. And then if you scroll way down, you can see the browse the newest reading for evidence activities here. And then helpful articles. And then learn more about Quill Premium, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Next, we have Manage Activities, which we basically talked about already, but any of your activities will be here. And then you can also filter it from all classes to the class I created or any classes that you have. And then Assign Activities is right here. This is my Open Activity Packs, but you can choose to select from my Close Activity Packs as well as Launch Lessons. So you can see it says you have no lessons assigned. In order to launch a lesson, you need to assign a lesson to one of your classes. With Quill Lessons, teachers can use Quill to lead whole class lessons to see and display student responses in real time. So there's three; these three are on here as well. The next thing we have is View Reports. So this is where you can choose which type of report you'd like to see. The first one we have is an activity summary report. So this is where you can quickly see which activity your students have completed and the skills that were demonstrated. The next one we have is activity atlas report is where you can see how students responded to each question and get a clear atlas of the skills they demonstrated. The next one is diagnostics report. So you can view diagnostic results and get a personalized learning plan with recommended activities. And then you can see also if there is these like premium options underneath these, that means that you do need to access premium to access them, but I'll talk about them anyways, just in case you get premium. Next one that is premium, it says activity scores report. This is where you can view and download each student's overall score and their individual scores per activity as a PDF or CSV. I believe in CSV is like an Excel or like a Google Sheet type file. I could be wrong about that, but it's something like that. The next one is, and then PDF is just like a view only type thing. So not that cool. Pretty boring if you ask me, but that's what a PDF is. So you can do those two. You can have those individual, you can view and download those based on those two file types. Next one we have that is premium is concepts report. This is premium. This is where you can view an overall summary of how your students are performing across all writing and grammar concepts. The next one is standards report. So you can view this report. You can review, you can view this report to see how your students are performing on specific national standards. And the last one at this moment on this part, it says data export, which is also premium, is where you can export this data as a CSV. So I believe that's like that Excel Google Sheet thing I talked about. File by filtering for the classrooms, activity packs, or students you'd like to export and then pressing download report. The next reports we can access are access curriculum specific dashboards. So you can see like the social studies dashboard. You can see, you see these new options again. That means these two are new. So for the social studies dashboard, this is where you can explore core social, quil, core, explore quills, social studies activities. Once assigned, return here to assign additional activities and track student progress and interdisciplinary science dashboard so explore quills interdisciplinary science activities once assigned return here to assign additional activities and track student progress and then you can learn about quill premium here as well so those are the different reports that you can generate you can see an activity summary right here by selecting the class and then selecting the activity packs and you can see an activity summary you can also see an activity atlas here as well. So you can select a classroom or all classrooms and you can see if you have activities, those reports will be here. But you will need to assign an activity in order to see these activity atlases. And then lastly, we have diagnostics. So any diagnostic reports are here as well, but you need to assign a diagnostic for these reports to pop up here. And you can see there's these, if you click on activity scores, 
This is a premium one that you will need, but this is where you can see activity scores, concepts, standards, and data export. Now, activity scores, concepts, standards, and data export, those four that I just mentioned, you need to have premium in order to access them. So keep that in mind. And then we have Quill Academy, which is where you are going to sign up for the premium version, which we will talk about in just a couple minutes. Now on the top here, we did talk about already these tabs with the school and district. Now I'm going to get a little bit more in depth about it. For school and districts, this is where you can see Ford Administrator. So this is where you can create district-wide success. And you can also do the premium pricing stuff here as well, which we'll come back to in a minute. And then we have learning tools. So you, there's Quill Connect, Quill Lessons, Quill Diagnostic, Quill Proofreader, Quill Grammar, and Quill reading for evidence. So there are learning tools within this site as well. Teacher Center. Now this is where you can access different resources. So all your resources are here. To break it down, they have writing for learning, getting started, video tutorials, best practices, and FAQ, which FAQ stands for frequently asked questions. And then we have Quill support. So getting started, general questions, using Quill's tools, data and reporting, research and pedagogy, I think is how you say that, and technical questions. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these different descriptions because you'd be waiting here and you'd be bored out of your mind for like 20 minutes. So I'm not going to talk about all, all these, but those are here if you would like to look at them. And then cool support is right here. Now, before we explore premium, if this is right here, your name. If you click on that, this is where you're going to see four options that you can do. My dashboard. So if you click on my dashboard, this is going to bring you back to your dashboard. So here are some handy actions that you can choose from. So kind of think of these kind of as like your quick links. The first one you can do is explore activity library, assign a diagnostic, view activity summary report, view as a student. This is helpful. Now, this could be very useful if you are trying to show a student something. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're trying to show a student something or you're trying to like complete the assignment together, that preview thing for the assignment or that activity could be useful as well. Because like if you guys are doing it together as a class, you want the students and you to see the same thing. So like you could complete it with them, which is pretty cool. Next one we have is explore a demo teacher account. Refer a teacher, add a class, or import classes from Google Classroom. Under that, we have daily tiny tip. So it gives you like little tips like every day or something. So the, today's, when I'm recording this video, this tip is using Quill as a, as a strategic, 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 do now, something. I thought that said strategy, but it does it. Using Quill as a strategic do now. I think is what that says. I don't know. If I'm wrong, don't don't give me hate. All right, but the next part we have is teacher center highlights. So any highlights are here. World history activities and AI knowledge activities. And then activity feed, your yearly summary. So how many activities you've assigned and how many activities are completed. You can filter that yearly or weekly. Under that, we have my account. So this, I'm not going to open it because it's going to show information that you guys do not need to look at. But for my account, this is where it's going to show you like your email. You can change your password. You can delete your account, I'm guessing, and stuff like that. Now, the next part here is support. Now, support is where you can go to support.quill.org slash en slash. Uh, that is what the website URL is, but this is where you can get advice and answers from the Quill team. So getting started with teachers, using Quill tools, general questions, getting started for students, data and reporting, Quill premium, research and pedagogy, technical questions, and Espanol, so Spanish. And then lastly, we have the log out button here. 
Now, before I let you guys go, before I end this video, we got to talk about premium. So click right by the Quill logo, click on Explore Premium. Now, this is going to bring you to the premium spot. And this is what I was waiting for because this is where it gets expensive. And I wanted to talk to you guys about the premium pricing. So, with premium, you can try it free for 30 days. 30 days. Okay? So, when you do sign up for premium, you do get a 30-day free trial to save time grading and gain actionable insights to see if you would like it. You can, for sure, cancel it before your trial. Like, if you don't want to use it, you can cancel the trial trial at any time before it charges you. It says then under here it says go premium to improve student writing. As a nonprofit, Quill provides all activities for free forever. Quill Premium provides schools and districts with these three things: advanced reporting, professional learning, priority tech support. Those are the three. Now, here are the prices. Basic is where you're going to start off when you sign up for your account. Zero dollars, free forever. That's the first one. Next one we have is teacher premium. This is per year. I don't think they have a month, month to month one or a monthly one. I think it's just per year or a yearly plan. So per teacher per year is $80. You can buy now by clicking buy now. But was, there's also another one, which is school and district premium, which is $1,800 per school per year. So you will need to book a call or per, or see purchasing options to do to order Quill for a school and district premium. For a school and district. All right? Premium. Now, if you scroll down, you can see writing tools. So it will show you from all of these different three what you can what it gives you as you can see i'm not going to go through all of them but these are what it gives you now if we scroll way down it says school and district premium we offer school premium site licenses that provide access for all teachers at a school to to both our free and teacher premium features so you can you will start off on the free version so you do need to have the free version first in order to sign up to the premium one but when you sign up, it will automatically give you the free one, and then you will have to click Explore Premium if you want to go right into Premium. But I recommend being on free for just a little bit to see if you really do need those features, because if you do not use those features that Premium is going to give you, then why? what's the point of spending the $80 or the $1,000-something that it was for a school? All right, so just be cautious when you do that. And then there's actionable features and support. So teacher reports, school administrator dashboard, and school-wide educator support. Professional development sessions, as you can see here. And then what are some topics explored? So you can look at stuff like that. And then what are people saying? Meet the, meet the coach team. So these are the two coaches, I guess. And then you can see who it is trusted by. And questions and answers. So I hope that really helped you kind of get to know how Quill worked and what Quill is if you never heard of it. It's most of, it's mostly for like ELA, English language arts and grammar or interactive writing and grammar and stuff like that. But you can use this for basically anything. All right, but just try the free version before you upgrade to premium. That's my advice. All right, because I'm on free version and I am happy without it. I don't think I need premium, but if you guys want premium because maybe you're going to use the premium features that is not offered in the free version, get the premium. All right, but if you're just using the features that are free, don't get the premium. Stay on the free version because you can use all those things. All right, but because you, you get a lot of options that you can choose from that you do not need to have the premium for. So it just it depends if that makes any sense that I what I've said for the last two minutes. But anyways, I really hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and turn on post notifications for you are notified whenever I upload a new video, which is every Saturday right now. But it might become 
daily at some point. I'm thinking about uploading more videos. They will not be as long as this one. This one's like 41, 42 minutes um, because Quill is a big website and there was a lot to do. Also, one more thing I forgot to let you know. Teachers that use Google Classroom, if your students are having trouble signing in, ask them to create a Quill password, all right, or request app verification, okay, because that's a big thing that I need you got teachers that use Google Classroom to do, so make sure you do that, as well as it is up here, but if you're like, what does that mean and stuff, you can click on the learn more, and it will tell you more of what... <laughs> what you need to do. All right, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. It's been me, Ben H. Hope this video was really helpful for you guys. And with that being said, have a great weekend. Sorry for all the bloopers in all these videos, in all these videos. In this video, just messed up again. But hey, everyone makes mistakes, so it's just part of life. But anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Sorry for all the bloopers. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great weekend. Peace.